Hey everybody, so when that CBC News video came out that you can view by clicking over here, there was quite a bit of criticism of that video. One of the questions that I've gotten on that video over and over and over again, and done my best to answer it in the comments, but it keeps getting asked, is, well, pins don't just bend by themselves. How do those pins on the screen get bent? That's an excellent question. That's an excellent question. So this is a machine that just came here from the Apple Store. And I'm just going to read you the notes that I have in this ticket here. It says, mail-in estimate for Brian. Issue description, mid-2014, 13-inch MacBook Pro. Won't recognize SSD and will flash a folder with a question mark because it cannot access the operating system. I took it to the Apple Store and the rep explained there was a loose screw rattling around and they could not run diagnostics on it and they believe there was a board issue. So they told this customer that they could not run diagnostics on it. They believed it was a board issue. And after getting it back from the Apple Store, it went from giving you a question mark folder to not only not giving you an image, but then telling you that there was actually a board issue. So let's take a look at this machine and see if there's anything that you guys notice when we uh, take a look around the board. So we're going to plug this in. By the way, check it out. This is a really nice Sony lens. This thing goes up to 135 millimeter zoom. Now what do we see over here? Hmm. Now as I've explained many times before, A, that machine that we were going over did not have liquid damage. The CBC edited out a short period of video where I was going over at the entire board in the microscope, which I pointed out in many of the comments. But the second thing that's important here is that this cable does not bend from people intentionally bending it just to mess with you. This cable bends when people are unplugging and plugging in the screen, wind up routing the cable wrong. So many people get wrong how to route this cable. So this cable is supposed to route something like around here and go into a little nudge around here. What people wind up trying to do is they try to fit it in here or route it around the DC inboard, something like that, and then they tug as hard as they can. And while they're tugging, this winds up getting plugged in at an angle, either like this and not reaching, because this over here is going around this rather than this, or they plug it in like this, and then this doesn't reach on the other ends, and the cable gets bent. So this is pretty interesting. So what we're going to do here is we're going to see what happens on this, if this is actually a board issue that's causing the image, or if it is simply this. And, you know, there were people saying, well, if somebody messes around with the cable, that's on them. And I agree with you. That is on them. Again, I don't think that a $1,200 or $2,000 bill for this is particularly necessary, but when people say, well, how could the cable possibly be bent? It's something that I think is important to note that this is the exact same thing that happens when people wind up at an Apple store. Ah, so we're going to get my meter on the screen before we plug this thing in. All right, I actually had a bunch of people just swarm and walk in, and it has been like that for the past five hours. So now that the store is closed, we're going to try again to finish the video. So where I left off, I was going to measure with my multimeter and see whether or not we still had any sort of short circuit to ground on the output for of the 5 volts of the screen, because if there is a short to ground, we're not going to reuse that. So it looks like there is still a short to ground, and if I take this cable out, the short to ground goes away, which means that this cable is probably permanently damaged from whatever the people at that Apple store did to it. Now, just for fun, I'm actually going to see what happens if I cut those two pins off of the display cable. So we're going to just take those two pins and tell them to get out of here. And we're going to take this end point of the connector, and I'm also going to tell that to just cut right off, like so. I don't care if I break this cable a little, because I'm not going to be using this anyway. I'm going to give the customer another one. I feel bad for what Apple Store did to this computer. All right, so we did that. And now these two other pins over here, we're just going to try and break those off. Usually pins 1, 2, and 3 are tied together, so while it's not exactly recommended to run all the power through one pin, temporarily it should be fine just for our diagnostic purposes. So we are going to do this. These are the pins that are nasty looking, and we are just going to run them out of there like so. Look on the other side of the cable, see what we have there. No pin. Okay. So we've cut out those two nasty pins 
that were giving us our issues. And now I'm going to do one more measurement and see wh if this is still shorted to ground. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. We're not. We've got kilo ohms. Uh, so let's just show you that there. Unfortunately, Paul Daniels' software is not working today, so I can't have the multimeter on the screen. So yeah, 5.6 million ohms. So what I want to do is I want to see if this has the capability of giving us a screen after undoing what happened to the Genius Bar. Okay, let's undo, undo that. We're going to plug you in. Power you on. Start you up. Okay, let's see if any smoke pops out of the connector. No smoke has popped out of the connector. Okay, now we're going to see if we are indeed getting 5 volts on the screen at that nasty section. Looks like we are. And now let's see what we're getting on backlight. Thirty-nine volts. Now as you can see, we are now getting a question mark folder on the screen. Now obviously this is not exactly what I want to give back to a customer. This is a little bit too too much for me. Bending a pin back, fine. Destroying pins, no. Usually I would give, in this case, as I said, with the replacement cable issue, usually I will give the customer an option of, here I bent the pin back, it's usable, you can take it, or I can replace the cable. But the, the, the bent pin may give you an issue later. Typically when dealing with people that bought a two to $3,000 computer, they're fine paying the 150 And the very small percentage of people that cannot pay that 150 that go for the freebie, a very small number of people actually go for that, will, uh, will appreciate it and they will refer hundreds of people here. And when they actually do have their finances in order, they will pay you for all of their repairs in the future. So it's very rare that the free offer is one that's taken. But here I can't offer that because we're talking about three pins for screen power and only two being present. So I will have to replace the cable on this model. The reason I'm doing this video is so that I can explain to the customer when I call them why it is that they had no video. So they went to the Apple Store because their SSD had failed. You know, it's six years old, things happen. But when they went to the Apple Store and they said they couldn't run a test and the board was failing, or and after that was done, well, there's no image on the screen, I really want them to understand that this is what they got when they went to the Apple Store. As I said, when that CBC piece came out, which you can view here, there were two common questions. A, why didn't you address the liquid damage, which was not on the board after five minutes of inspection with a fairly powerful microscope. But more importantly, well, how does a pin bend? It doesn't bend by itself. So I thought I'd show you how that typically bends when people try to route it improperly and also answer my third question that kept coming up in my comments. What kind of idiot can't even plug the display connector in? Well, now you know. And you know where they work as well. The reason I think this is very important is because time and time again people have talked about how bad independent repair is. Now, there are a lot of people in independent repair that give independent repair a bad name, and I point them out on this channel every chance I get. However, the argument that nobody in independent repair should have access to any schematics, tools, parts, diagrams, because safety or, oh, think of the children, you really should have a bit of insight into how the people that work for the manufacturer work on those devices. I'm not perfect. I make lots of mistakes in my business, personal, and technical life. Warranty issues are going to come up when you're dealing with physically and liquid damaged products. It's just a fact of life. There's a difference between messing up while fixing something that's physically or liquid damaged and misrouting something and then trying to shove it in there as hard as you can, realize that you broke something, and then give it back to the customer like that, knowing that you did it, and not say anything. It's another thing to do that when you work for the manufacturer of the product, particularly when that manufacturer is the manufacturer that every single day is pushing out some new propaganda designed to pacify people when their independent repair option is being taken away. I've often been asked in posts like this one why I don't often explain myself in the exact same manner that I did in that post. And I've also said that of the 1,000 or 1,200 or 1,300 videos that I have public, it's, as Apple would say, a very small number that wind up getting large view counts or massive people linking to them. 
But you have to understand, 10 years in, why it can sometimes be just a little bit frustrating to deal with a company that is routinely trying to erase you from existing because they don't think that you're competent to work on their products when they themselves are not competent to work on their own products and allow customers to leave their store with devices in decrepit condition. I've spent the last six or seven years putting up on YouTube just about everything on uh, how I do business, why I do business the way I do, and showing you every single job I do, warts and all. And I try to share as much knowledge freely as I can. I grow tired of the frequent attempts to discredit independent repair, and more so myself, simply because somebody doesn't like me. At the end of the day, deep down, even if you hate us with all your heart, if you've got a machine with a solder and SSD, and your last backup was yesterday, and there was this one book you wrote this killer chapter on, and whoops, coffee. Or maybe you're just not in the financial shape that you usually are this month, but you need this thing for a live gig that you're working on. At the end of the day, deep down, when you have an issue, who do you trust with your product, your data, your money, knowing everything that you do now? Them or me? That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. Excellent at data recovery, not the best camera. What happened, Steve? Dude, you launched a MacBook box right on my fucking stomach. Oh. What do you think is gonna happen if you're standing there? Good to be. You didn't run through it. You went through it and pushed through it. Jesus.